Welcome to KOEM Presents, a podcast produced by KOEM News Now and the four states' most watched news team. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Welcome guys. This is the first of KOAM Presents, as you can see, brought to you by Freeman Health Systems, locally owned, nationally recognized. Make sure to check them out at freemanhealth.com. Dot com. So you're asking yourself, what is what is this? Basically, we came together and we realized we wanted to make a podcast. Yeah. Um, we wanted to kind of pull back the curtain, if you will, uh, behind the weather, talk about you know how things got started, what makes the people of KOEM tick, if you will. Um, so Doug, it's obviously been how long have you been with us? Like, oh gosh, I've been here. 19 and a half years. Can you 19, believe that? 19 and a half years. How old are you? I'm old. I'm 43. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old. I am 26, if that makes you feel any older. Jeez. I'm Lance Benning, by the way. I guess uh, do introductions. Uh, How long have you been here? I've been with KOM six years. Okay, quite a while. In some form or fashion. Nice, We've nice. Pretty much always done weather. You came in as head. I did. Yeah, this was actually my third job. And yeah, I got hired here. As the chief, I was 23, almost 24, so I was a young pup. I was yeah. one of the youngest in the newsroom. I remember I was, I remember looking at Dow, and he was like my age oh my now. <laughs> now I remember thinking, man, he's an old man. I hope you're not listening, Dow. Um, now I'm that old man. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of strange how, yeah, it's weird. And so going back, you, this is your third, this was your third job. Yep. So you came out of... Hey, you. Yeah, so I always knew I wanted to be a meteorologist. I mean, since, oh, I'll tell you what. Okay, so when I was real young, I wanted to be a trash man. Trash, because, yep, like, just. I thought it was the coolest thing to ride on the back of that truck. I just wanted wrong to, with it. I just wanted to be the guy riding on the back of the truck. I didn't want to do any of the work. And then uh, that only lasted for about a year. And then I wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, per usual. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was in first grade, the Challenger exploded. Oh, and I was yeah. done with being an astronaut. I was yeah. like, I don't want to do that. And then somehow I went to weather. So really since like first grade, I've been pretty big on it. But I mean, I knew all the way through elementary and middle school, I was, this is what I was going to do. So I got a early uh, start on it. And know. we were talking before, you were struck by lightning. I was. Legit, I was like. Legit struck by lightning. And I got terrible migraines from it. So oh, I, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for you don't know that yeah. that's something he's dealt with for a long time, well, apparently since you got struck by light. Yeah, well, you know, I was diagnosed with migraines when I was three, but I only had like one a week. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 12, I got struck by lightning. Um, I've had a migraine every day since. What were you doing? Well, so we grew, I grew up in Kansas City and um, we're, we're big lake people. Mm -hmm. So my parents bought a lake house uh, at the Lake of the Ozarks and I was already a weather enthusiast, and there was a severe thunderstorm morning that rolled in. It was Morgan County in uh, central Missouri. I remember I was watching KY3 out of Springfield, because oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what we got. Well, our boat was always broke down. I mean, it, I mean, we were lucky if it ever ran. So my dad was fixing it in the dock, and this severe thunderstorm warning comes in. So I'm thinking, hey, I got to go warn my dad. So I run down to the dock. And we get down there, and he's, he's in the dock slip in the boat, and uh, it started hailing, so we got kind of stuck on the dock. Yeah. And I'm leaning against a metal pole, and it went, hit the dock, and uh, I remember seeing sparks, and then I woke up in the hospital. Wow, so you just completely out blacked cold. out. Yeah, I had some burns on me, and uh, besides that, I was okay, except the migraines. But yeah, <laughs> since then, I've had daily migraines. Um, I go to a branch of the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. Every six months I have to fly up there and um, I'm kind of a guinea pig for them. They try yeah. all their new medications on me. Huh. 
So that yeah, it's good times. <laughs> reminds me, my uh, mom's coworker, she was struck by lightning. Really? And the headline was, woman struck by lightning, saved by her thong. Now, this was a very <laughs> older woman. So back then, the thong was just her flip-flops. She was wearing okay. rubber flip-flops. Right, right, right. And she got struck by lightning, and I guess the insulation is ultimately what saved it from kind of completely going through yeah. her. And so she's saved by her thong. Yeah, so, I mean, mine went through the metal. I don't, I mean, if you take a direct shot, I don't know if you can survive yeah. that. So, yeah. but yeah, it, it wasn't fun. I, the funny thing is, I mean, I love weather. I'm scared to death of lightning. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. Like the towers here at the station, mm -hmm. we got, what, an 1,100 foot tower? Yeah. And there's a lot of nights in the spring I have to leave when we're having thunderstorms and you'll walk to your car and that tower will get hit. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> that was. <laughs> it's, just... hitting, it's hitting a lot, too, whenever it's up there. Oh, you yeah. Can hear it it, you it can... scares me to death. Yeah. So. so from there, you know, you obviously had a love for weather, a little bit of a fear. And then. <laughs> You went through high school and you decided to go to KU. I did. Um, so there's a meteorologist in Kansas City and he's still chief there. His name's Brian Busby. Yeah. yeah. And um, he, my mom was a school teacher. So he would go do school talks. And he went to my mom's school. My mom pulled me out of school. I was in fourth grade. And so I watched his presentation and then met him afterward. And he's like, come down to the station. And then I started coming down to the station. So it was Channel 9, mm -hmm. um, yep. the ABC station. I'd go down there. Gosh, probably once a month from like fourth grade till college. Wow. And then, um, so he really helped me out. And he got me actually my first job, which was in uh, uh, Lawrence, Kansas. So I went to KU. And then as I was a freshman, he got me onto a little cable station. It was Channel 6. And they, they actually just closed the doors a couple of years ago. Um, I started out as kind of doing a, it was CNN headline news break-in. So I would, okay. in the mornings, I would do like a 20 second little cut in. And then I did that for about a year and I worked my way up to the chief job. So I was going to school full time and then I was the chief at mm -hmm. Channel 6. We only covered two counties. I mean, so a small little area. Um, worked there for about another year as chief. While you were in school. While I was yeah. in school, yeah. And then I, um, so we have those certifications, the mm -hmm. American Meteorological Society and then the National Weather Association, NWA. And you're, at that time, you had to have three years of experience to qualify to get the SEAL. And what the SEAL is, in a sense, is um, it's a certification pretty much saying you're good at your job. <laughs> you're and, good enough. Yeah. <laughs> you go out and do it. So, but a lot of, most TV stations, do, they want you to have that certification. Yeah. And... So I called them and I was like, well, I have three years of experience, but I don't have a college degree. And I was like, can I apply for it? And they looked through my transcript and they said, you have majority of the classes, we'll allow you to go for it. Yeah. But if you don't get your degree, we're stripping you of the seal. Wow. So I went for it, didn't think I'd get it. <laughs> I got it. And I was like, so I'm still to this day, the youngest one to ever get it. Okay. Just the, of the all the certified you're yep. the, yeah. Uh So, yeah, there's, I'd say there's about four or 5,000 that are certified. Holy crap. Over the years. But so I got it at 21. And then so I was like, so my confidence level shot through the roof. I'm yeah. like, I can do anything. Yeah. So there was a, a job opening in Kansas City. So with Gary Lee's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which Busby wasn't very fond of i mean I just, busby loves lezak but it's his competitor yeah so i'm his protege and he doesn't want me to go work for his competitor <laughs> and so they had a weekend job open i got that and they immediately moved me to mornings and i hated doing mornings yeah i'm not a morning person no i'm not either um it was crazy because i was so i'm still doing school i'm commuting mm -hmm. back and forth it took me five years to graduate um and I would drive through Westport and down through the plaza in Kansas City to the station. Well, I'm at that college age, so I'm going to work when the bars are letting out. And <laughs> it, it was depressing. And so I, I did mornings for KSHB in Kansas City for about a year and a half. And then I was like, I want to be a chief. And mm -hmm. because I liked, doing, I liked being a chief when I was in Lawrence. And, uh, but I didn't want to go too far from home. Mm -hmm. 
And I searched for a while, and this job opened, and been here ever since. The rest is history. Yeah. I mean, so like, and I guess side story of the Brian Busby thing. I don't know if you remember this. When I first started as a news assistant, um, you were FaceTiming with him or something. And I ran up the hall. I grew up in the Kansas City area, <laughs> watched him my entire life. And I looked at his phone, and I'm like, is that, is that Brian Busby? He's like, yeah, you want to say hi? I'm like, hey, like, <laughs> nerdy little kid. I'm like, hey, I watched you every day, you know. Brian's a legend, man. I yeah. Mean. Would you say, like, I don't know if meteorologists have, like, styles necessarily but uh, you said you know he was your mentor yeah like, how does that work as far as do you kind of get presentation kind of advice yeah. from him or like you how know does that it, work? it's weird I I learned a uh, majority of my forecasting from Lee Zach but my on-air style is Busby really so yeah uh, when I'm on the wall we mm -hmm. call it the chroma key wall yeah I move around like Busby does I kind of go back and forth side mm -hmm. to side um, so my on-air, I've kind of developed my own style over the years, yeah. but I have a lot of Busby in me. <laughs> and, and Busby may be one of the best presenters I've ever seen. He just, he communicates it because we have to, we have to take all this science and in a sense without, we have to dumb it down. No, oh, no. I it, mean, so, I, yeah. for, I'm not very scientific savvy. So for <laughs> me to be able to see it and know, okay, this is what's going to happen. Um, so you worked with Gary Lezak as far as to, and I know obviously maybe we won't get into the heady pattern right now, but to develop how to analyze the patterns or like. Um, yeah, it, Gary's a, Gary is super sharp. He's one of the sharpest people I've ever met. Um, but yeah, he, he just really helped me hone in on just everyday forecasting Yeah. because we look at all these weather models and just how to read a model and, you know, you, over time you get better. I mean, I look back at some big events we had, you know, 10, 15 years ago and I'm like, oh man, I would have caught that a week earlier, <laughs> but you know, back then I didn't. Yeah. So you, you get better over the years, but yeah, he's, he's a sharp forecaster. Just, just those repetitions. Yeah. That. So how did it feel like in college? You know, I don't know how, is like the program pretty big? Like do you have other classmates who are like, oh my, that Doug guy, he's already, you know, he's got the seal and he, like how? Well. Cause you said it made your college experience weird. Cause you're like getting Yeah. Yeah. Um, not that many people want to be meteorologists. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of weather enthusiasts, but when you figure out what you have to do to get it, yeah. I mean, we, in a sense, I had to have a math minor. Mm -hmm. In a sense, we had to have a physics minor. And then meteorology is a mathematical equation. Yeah. So you get deep into the classes, and it's hard. I mean, there were several classes I took over. Oh, and, I believe it, yeah. But my freshman class was 196 people. So there were 196 people that were declaring to be a meteorologist. Okay. And I graduated with six. Holy crap. So, I mean, it really got weeded down. And of the six, I think three of us went into broadcast and three went like National Weather Service or something mm -hmm. like that. And that's the real like number crunching kind yeah. of Yeah. Gotcha. So, we all have the same degree. Um, it's just, what do we do with it? Yeah. So, so did you like the, I mean... Because before I got in the position I am and, you know, marketing and things like that with KOM, I, I loved radio. Like mm -hmm. The presentation, is that kind of like, did you, I mean, everyone likes being on camera. Some people hate it. They say they hate it. I don't know if they actually do. I was always, uh, I never thought I could do TV. My whole childhood, um, I, I know I'm fairly outgoing mm -hmm. and I, I think I have a decent personality. I just didn't think I'd be good at it. Yeah. And so all, even in college, I wasn't even at the beginning of college, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, to do TV. And then when, when I started it, then I was like, Oh, I, I like telling people the weather. <laughs> it pumps me up. I'm ready to go. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, as a kid, you look at it and you're just like, I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I like it. And I mean, you just keep growing like I said on Facebook and things like that you've kind of developed your own you know we talked about this when we were throwing out this idea is, is talking about like the memes uh -huh. you know <laughs> like it's even like you've like you developed memes and a following and things like that and I, I don't know it's just a 
It's crazy to see if you would have expected to come this far, as far as your whole, when you were doing all this classes and math and physics and everything like that. You know, the, this in industry has changed so much. I know we're going on tangents here. Oh, that's but, you know, we, when I started this, your job was to come in, forecast, and do the weather on TV, and go home. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 20 plus years later, it's, hey, you got to update a weather app. You're in, you got you to write stories. You got to do a blog. You got to do social media. You mm -hmm. got to do this. You got to do that. You got to, so, I mean, YouTube, uh, podcast. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's, it's all over the place now. And, but I, I think the, I didn't, I didn't know where this industry was going. I mean, I have an idea of where it's going now. Yeah. But we still don't know where it's going to be in 10 years. Um, but yeah, like the social media aspect, the, my, I always have a strategy and my mm -hmm. strategy to build social media was interact with people. Yeah. So that's how I, you know, if people ask a question, I answer it. And so that's how I slowly built a following was hopefully be right on forecast, but also interact with people. Oh yeah. I mean, even before I started here, I mean, I've seen on Facebook answering questions and answering comments, you know, just kind of makes you more curious. Like I said, I really wasn't a big weather. My, I mean, I grew up, my dad was one of those guys who would stand outside yeah. and just watch the storm, you know, the storm watchers or enthusiasts. I was never, but you kind of, when you live, especially down here, mm -hmm. um, you kind of just like get caught up in the excitement of it. I don't know yeah. if it's necessarily excitement. It's like just curiosity. Cause I mean, in this area, especially too, cause like what do meteorologists like in the West Coast? So I guess they have earthquakes and other things, but like oh, I'd be bored. You I, know what I mean? Like there's other this area is just like the cream of the crop. Like oh, I love it. Is yeah. that the competitive? Like is it competitive more here than yeah. it is on like the coast? Or you, you know, when I got hired here, Danny Thomas, our general manager at the time, mm -hmm. he asked me. He, I remember we were at Del Rio in Pittsburgh doing lunch, and he asked me. He's like, "Well, why would you want to come to Joplin?" And I was like. You guys have fantastic weather. And he kind of looked and he kind of went blank for about 10 seconds. And then he goes, what do you mean by fantastic weather? And I was like, <laughs> you get snowstorms, you get tornadoes, you get severe weather. Yeah. He's like, okay, I thought that's what you mm -hmm. meant. But he's like, most people don't consider that fantastic weather. Yeah. But yeah, it's central, I mean, this area, there's a lot of markets that are good weather markets. I mean, really anything from Denver East Usually it's pretty good, but yeah. you, you couldn't pay me to go work west of Denver because I, I'd be bored. I get bored here when, like this, uh, when we go four or five days with nothing, I'm bored. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I need weather action. Yeah, weather, I remember, like I said, when I was a news assistant and it would be in the summer um, oh. and you'd just be like, oh, it's, it's hot, it's humid. You know, yeah. that's, I mean, there's only so many descriptors for hot and humid weather. That's why I disappear in the summer. I take vacation. <laughs> Go out back yep. in the lake. Hope you don't get struck by lightning yeah. again. Um, and then I figured, you know, we could kind of create with just kind of keeping you guys along for the ride, create a segment called Heady Halftime. So before we kind of take a little break, okay. get some water. What is uh, going on in the, I kind of put you on the spot here, but the meteorolo meteorological? That pretty is good. Pretty close. Yeah. Close enough. Um, in the science world, it, I mean, it's probably going to be over my head, but like what's going on in the world that's like, it's a big deal in your industry. You know, it, right now everything um, is, you know, I go to like the AMS meetings, the annual meetings. Right now, the big thing in our world is it's actually climate change and trying to figure out, you know, because we get so many more hurricanes, so many more mm -hmm. tornadoes, so many more big storms. We hate as meteorologists that climate change is kind of put on a political, yeah. it, because it's not, I mean, but uh, it's funny because so many people will ask me all the time, well, do you believe in climate change? And within the same sentence, they'll be like, hey, so why don't we get as much snow as we used to? <laughs> or why, why are we having so many flooding rains? I'm like, you just answered your question. But yeah, I, yeah meteorological wise, the biggest thing right now is combating climate change because mm -hmm. we get so many more. I mean, think of like the Kentucky tornadoes in December. Yeah. I mean, that's not supposed to happen in December. So 
yeah, that, that's kind of the big thing right now. Um, and then figuring out where this industry is going, because we used to be TV broadcast meteorologists, and mm -hmm. now we're multimedia digital meteorologists. I mean, you see even people on TikTok. I know yeah. people linking TikTok videos yeah. to you on your Facebook page. They're like, is this real? And you're like, uh, kind of. <laughs> I, I like doing TikTok because I can... Oh, and you, you have a TikTok too. Yeah, I yeah. can just kind of BS about weather stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. There is a really funny one. I, I mean, I, all of them are funny, of course. But there was <laughs> one specific that cracked me up. So we had a, um, an old producer here, and she, I think you like stitched one of her videos about how much she loves Florida and the weather. Oh, yeah, Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. Yeah. And, yeah, and your hair was like <laughs> blowing all crazy. It was like, they got, I hear they have a blizzard in Missouri. And you're like, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was our big, uh, big snow that we got this winter. That was fun. That was. Yeah. Maddie was great with um, her and Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She, I mean, she really got Christian's. Uh, if people don't know, Christian was my son who passed cancer mm -hmm. about six months ago, five and a half months ago. Um, but she really helped him build a following, and which was great because it built his confidence. Yeah. And, you know, because he was a preteen, and preteens don't have confidence. Yeah, so, I lot. mean, yeah. But, yeah, Maddie's amazing. Yeah, so. that was really cool. A little uh, collaboration, yeah. if you will. Absolutely. But, uh, we'll take a quick break, refill our, our drinks here, and see you in a second. At Grand Lake Casino, you get more points, more free play, and better rewards. Play at the casino where friends play. Grand Lake Casino, Highway 10 north of Grove, Oklahoma. Check them out online at grandlakecasino.com. Make your home more comfortable with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great in-store selection, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture with stores in Brazelton and Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Anywho, welcome back after a short little break. We want to kind of talk about what we're going to do with this podcast and kind cool. of some directions we're going to go. Um, we want to do a mailbag. We want to answer your guys' questions, um, whether it be on our website, koamnewsnow.com slash podcast. We'll have a little thing you can fill out. Um, we'll be posting stuff on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Just drop us a question. Any question within reason, you know, like not like what color is your within underwear reason. or something. <laughs> um, and hopefully we can answer some of these on our podcast. We'd love to hear kind of what you guys want to know and what kind of content you guys would like to see. Um, and for those of you who are listening and want to see our beautiful faces or not so beautiful, depending how you look at it, <laughs> go to the KOM <laughs> Plus app. Um, we'll have all the videos uploaded there um, on the same day that we upload on our respective streaming platform. You can come check it out. Watch us just hanging out, drinking water out of styrofoam cups um, with this beautiful display. Water? That, that's what you I mean. Mine's way stronger than water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess to, to close out, I'd like to thank again our sponsor, Freeman Health Systems. Uh, system, excuse me. Um, and we look forward to talking to you guys again. We're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna have fun. And we look to hope to see you there. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Thank you for listening to KOM Presents. For the latest content in local news, weather, and sports, please go to koemnewsnow.com.